in the presence of antibiotics, bacteria will develop different defense mechanisms, such as producing resistant cell and persistor cells. Wait, what does persistor cells mean? And what is the difference between them and the resistant cells? Well, persistor cells defined as a dormant cell, and a dormant mean inactive, no cell function, that forms spontaneously within a biofilm that is highly tolerant to antibiotics. In other words, those cells tend to sleep in the presence of antibiotics without any genetic changes, while resistant cells will adopt different survival resistant mechanism such as target changing through mutation. Persistor cells were first described by an Irish doctor who worked as a professor of preventive medicine and bacteriology at Trinity College of Dublin, Joseph Bigger, in 1944. He discovered them while he studied the effectiveness of penicillin. In 1980s, Harris Moyd discovered the hep A7 gene. That gene is responsible to generate the persistor cells. In 2000, Kim Lewis rediscovered the persistor cells when he studied the time-dependent killing of bacterial cells inside the biofilm. And now, my teammate Ms. Tara will take over the next session and she will explain the persistor cells formation mechanism. Everyone wants the basic information that what is persistor cells and how it works. So let's we move towards the formation and dormancy of persistor cells. The biofilm contains resistance bacterial cells and persistor cells. When the antibiotics introduce in the biofilm, some bacterial cells will modify their genome and become resistance against antibiotics and some bacterial cells remain dormant in the biofilm. And the state of dormancy is due to toxin-antitoxin pairs which enables to cells that escape the effects of antibiotics. In toxin-antitoxin pairs, the role of toxin is to disturb the antibiotics target within the cell and the role of antitoxin is to protect the cell from the toxicity. So these cells are known as antibiotic tolerant. When antibiotics level drops, these cells become active and again repopulate the biofilms. Now I will speak about anti-persister cell therapies. Group 1 is direct killing of persister cells. HT61 is a small fluoroquinolone based compound. It is a narrow spectrum antibiotic with increased bactericidal action against stationary phase gram positive organisms. HT61 is particularly effective against Staph aureus. It directly kills the bacterial cell by depolarization of the membrane and destruction of the cell wall. Group 2 is resuscitation of the persister cell. Cis2 decanoic acid is a fatty acid signaling molecule. In the presence of this molecule, persister cells transition from a dormant state to a metabolically active state thus rendering the bacterial cell susceptible to many antimicrobials. This effect has been demonstrated in Pseudomonas aeruginosa and E. coli. Group 3 inhibit persister cell formation. MVF4 is a regulated quorum sensing virulence pathway in Pseudomonas aeruginosa. This pathway controls the virulence of Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Inhibitors of this pathway block the acute virulence of this organism but has also been found to inhibit the formation of antibiotic tolerant cells. An example of one of these inhibitors is M64. This is a low molecular weight compound with a benzamide benzimidazole backbone. The addition of this inhibitor along with an antibiotic leads to the clearance of the acute infection but also the prevention of recolonization. The last group I'm going to speak about are novel antipersister therapies such as silver treatment. Historically, it has been shown to have activity against gram-negative bacteria. However, to date, its mode of action is not fully understood. It has been used successfully as a topical ointment. Silver has many antimicrobial qualities, such as increasing reactive oxygen species 
and increasing membrane permeability. The studies show that silver can be used in combination therapy to potentiate the action of antimicrobials.